Hey, it's Omo Guy coding again today. In this episode, we're going to work on the z-axis, but uh, first we need to uh, cut the lead screws to the correct length. So you might ask, how do I determine the right length for the lead screws? Well, let's get out of here, and we'll go up to the top of the page here. And he, Ryan has these wonderful calculators in inches and in millimeters. So if we go to the one in inches, because you know I'm one of those Americans. Uh, you enter the X, uh, Y, and Z usable distances that you need, and it'll come up with the uh, lead screw length right down here in either inches or millimeters, depending on what you're using. The minimum length. You can always go more if you want. But go ahead and start assembly. All right, so I've got one of the um, lead screws fastened here in this little table vise. Um, the part that I'm not going to be using is the uh, end that is uh, connected to the vise. I've got my little black mark there. That's the approximate location. And uh, given the spin on this guy, I think I actually want to be over here on the other side. I've got a board set up in front of my synthesizer over there so that we won't be spraying any little metal fragments in there. And we should be able to cut just like this. All right, so there they are. They've been cut. wasn't quite as accurate as I intended to be, so they're uh, well, they're close, close enough, I think. In fact, we should put the camera up here so you can see. Yeah, got them up one upside down. So I'm going to go ahead and clean up my mess here, and then we'll resume. All right, let's continue with the XZ assembly here, and there's the main part that I really like. Let's move some of these other parts out of the way. And the first thing I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and attach the stepper motor here to the um, grid work piece here. What do they call that? That is number five. That is the XZ main. Now it looks like it goes like this. Uh, I looked on a bigger picture. These grid work things face toward the center of the machine. So we'll go ahead and uh, grab a stepper motor, which I thought I had here. There we go. We'll go ahead and put it in. Uh, he doesn't give us any indication on which way the wires go, so I'm going to run them straight out the back here. And then four M3 by 10s. All right, there we are. Got that in. And for the next part of the assembly, we're going to need some six by thirty-two by one and a half. All right, so I've got this thing propped up on a couple of screw boxes here for a moment, just because the shaft is sticking out down there. Let's take a look at these pieces here. For this task, <clears throat> there are two different pieces you will need. You'll need the one that has the little tiny lip in here. It's just a very short little tiny lip and the one that has the larger piece here that will attach to um, the little TIE fighter. And be careful because these guys are mirrored too. Make sure you have the right one that fits. Um, and it'll fit such that it lines up uh, with this little ring here. we will sit right on top of there and the little TIE fighter uh, guy, a uh, wing will fit right in there. And we'll actually do that first here. But remember to compare it to the one you did before, make sure you're all set up and doing it on the same side. So here's my one from before and now it is facing, uh, the grid work is facing the center. Uh, they, these two grid works will face each other. And I've got the little TIE fighter up here so I want to make sure that I put the TIE fighter on this end right over here. Once you've decided which side this is going to go on, and uh, you've got your little TIE fighter here, let's attach the little TIE fighter guy first before we put it onto the rest of the assembly because that's going to be a real drag trying to get a, a finger up there to hold the nut. So I'm going to position this guy here. Um, 
Now this calls for a six by 32 by one inch, but if you've got something shorter, like I've some, got some three quarters here, that's perfectly long enough. A half would probably be long enough, maybe even a quarter if you have those laying around. So go ahead and insert that guy in there and we'll run it down here through the hole. Let's make sure that that's going to fit nicely. Yep, it sure looks like it will. And we'll double check that in the end. So I'm going to reach in here and attach a lock nut. Which I should have done before I applied the centerpiece there, but you know, that's the way it goes. Act will take that piece right out. So now with it wide open, we'll just uh, go ahead and flip that screw up in there and snug it down. We'll go ahead and snug that down the rest of the way. There. And we'll go back to this. I've gotten a little bit smarter in my older age, and I decided to take some green uh, frog tape. It is frog season in Minnesota now. They're out there chirping and doing all their fun froggy things. So it's okay to use that. And, you know, extra points if it matches your color theme. So now with that sitting there, next time we come along, we'll easily be able to get that in there. I'm just going to pop this guy on here. Now this is where we use the 6 by 32 by uh, one and a half inch screws. Now these little cup shape areas here fit the 6 by 32 locking nuts very nicely in there. So hopefully it'll reduce the amount of uh, pliering we'll have to do to hold things together during final assembly. But for now they work very good. I'm just going to hold them up there and uh, just snug up the screw until it meets up with the um, with the locking material. And that's as far as I'm going to go for now on uh, on those guys because we will go ahead once we have the pipes in, uh, tighten them up, snug them down at that time. So we'll do the other side here. Now the thing we want to consider on this piece here is that we want to make sure that we have this little lip in here that catches the top of that uh, uh, stainless steel. We want to have that facing up because the stainless steel will come in from the bottom here and will ride on the ridge in there and the ridge in here. So we want to make sure we have it uh, the right way around. Get that out of the way. I'm going to grab some more. Uh... Oh, but before we do, let's tape this guy on for us again. And that will sit just like that. We'll grab some tape. And we'll just tape it right in there. It doesn't have to be real snug, just something to hold the piece in place so it doesn't disappear on us in the process. Oops, and this has to go, make sure you get it the right way around, has to match up with the top here so that the ridge is up. So it's got to go like that. And let's get a couple of 6x32 by, by 1.5 inch screws in there again. And we'll set this lock nut right into that nice little channel he's got there. And then it'll thread in real easy. Right, and on the other side. And once again, it's time for one of these little coupling nuts. First off, I want to make sure that I have all my uh, set screws backed out so they don't appear inside the center shaft. I'll back them out a little bit if they're sticking in there too far. Just don't take them out too far because they will come out. Hmm. So if we look carefully at this guy, we have a hole on one end that's big enough to fit the lead screw that we cut up earlier. And the other side fits on the shaft of the stepper motor. So let's go ahead and orient, orient this on the stepper motor first. And we want to make sure that we line up one of the set screws with the flat face of the uh, stepper motor and then we're going to push that on about as far as we can get it but we want to leave just enough room on the other side to be able to um, allow the, uh, the threaded rod or uh, the lead screw to attach and I feel like I've got that down there just maybe a hair too far so I'm just gonna pull it back just a little bit or maybe even pry it back a little bit how about that just a little bit, doesn't have to be much. There, okay. Now according to the diagram that Ryan has here, and he has a uh, 
section right here, and I'll put it on the screen. We want most of the stepper motor shaft running through that coupler and then just the lead screw attached to the very tail end section there. Because if we had the lead screw going through any further, it would inhibit the flexing of these parts just because it'd be all compacted together. So this is a better approach. We want those two touching each other because in normal operation, that's where the contact will be. This will be riding on top of that lead screw. So we don't have to worry about expansion because it's being compressed all the time. But we do want to make sure that those two are touching so that we don't have any push together play um, in the process here. So being I've got that in there is about as far as I can do it and still leave some room for the lead screw to fit in there. I'm going to go ahead and tighten that down. Now the other one I did, I had a little trouble getting the shaft through that center piece. It's probably a little machining uh, piece there that had remained in the, from the processing. And uh, but if you push it through, it'll it'll go. And first, we'll flatten, uh, connect the uh, screw on the flattened side of the shaft, and then we'll tighten the set screw on the other side of the shaft. There we are. <clears throat> so let's get our lead screw again here. <clears throat> and remember, I cut some length off of these guys because I I didn't need them any longer than this. And we have the man, uh, clean manufactured end here, and we have the rough uh, hacked off end. We want to put the hacked off end into the, uh, the coupler. And we want to make sure that it's making contact with the shaft of the stepper motor. So there should be no squeeze play here. If we push down, it should not squeeze together. In fact, what we want to do is we want to grab that uh, coupler and actually pull it up a little bit. It's kind of stretch it out and make sure that guy's in there all the way and then we'll go ahead and tighten it down with some tension on it. Once I find the right tool, there it is. And conveniently these take a two millimeter wrench. There we go. I'll go ahead and tighten the other one down. So now the situation we have here is that we've got some expansion on that part and it can still wiggle very freely on all the all the cuts and uh, there is no compression. If I push them together it does not compress because uh, if it does then we're going to have problems in, uh, in use of, of the device. But it can pull out a little more if it needs to but we want to make sure there's no compression there. So that's as far as I'm going to take this part until it's time for final assembly and putting the tubes in there. And here's the other one. We should uh, put it uh, great side to great side with the uh, uh, mating half once I get all the wires tangled together. There we go. So remember the grates are going to face forward on the machine. They're, I mean, sorry, they're going to face toward each other. They're going to face toward the center just like this. And we want to make sure that in the end here, we've got those little TIE fighters on the same end, <laughs> so it can attach to something on the other side. Now that we're close to the final assembly time, I just wanted to mention that uh, it's recommended that we lubricate uh, the threaded rod here. Now, of course, uh, Ryan's got a nice uh, little vial that he sells online of some uh, silicone lube of some sort for, uh, for this, but, you know, I, I'm just going to use some the old standby jar of bearing grease. Let me grab a glove. There we go. A glove. And, and then we'll talk about an experiment that I'm going to try. It shouldn't take much, you know. Oh, that's way too much. I'll just smear some on there. How about that? That should be plenty. You know, of course, I, I greased up the old one, too, on the uh, Lowrider 1, but I had this problem, I've got this upside down, of course, where, you know, the, the lubricant would kind of collect, uh, you know, sawdust and stuff into a, a real mucky mess, and uh, the one that was closest to most of the cutting would get, uh, you know, uh, be less easy to move, of course. So I came up with this experiment uh, after, you know, five or six... Uh, rounds of experimentation here, I came up with this shape that uh, will attach to two of the bolts on the 
um, stepper motor up here using, I believe these are 16 uh, millimeter M3s. to uh, kind of help shield this whole area from uh, from the sawdust. Now it's an experiment, will it work? I have no idea. I'd like it to be a little bit longer, but this is as big as I could get it to print. Uh, I've got an extension that I can print down here and glue or tape on. I don't know if that's gonna work or even hold. Like I say, this is a whole experiment thing, so we'll see how this works. But I'll attach one over here and one over on the other side. And uh, I'll let you know how it goes. It looks like it's going to, you know, it looks like it finally fits the way I want it to. And it covers the um, uh, little uh, rollers for the belts over here too. So that uh, they don't get all covered with uh, sawdust all the time. Okay. There it is. And... Uh, Looks like it rides just above the, um, the normal piece down there, the uh, the bearing piece. Let's get a piece of flat wood here and just make sure that we're not sticking up. Well, we are a little bit, but I think that's going to be okay. Yeah, I think that'll be fine. Might have to have an extra hand when, uh, once you ins to install it to get it past this point, but. Uh, if I put an extension on there, then uh, once it's down, it shouldn't be a problem. And hopefully I won't have to go up that high either to, uh, let's see how high I'd have to go. Ooh, I'm going to have to stick my hand down here to find out. Yeah, that is... Uh, not writing properly, but I think it's just because nothing's really screwed together up here. Yeah, here we go. There we go. Now oh, it's back where it should be. Oh, and this one's out, of course. So yeah, so that's that's as high as I really should go because I'm almost got my uh, my uh, pipes out of the lower um, lower area here. So I really shouldn't be taking this thing any higher unless I'm going to be taking it off or putting it back on so I think that should work we'll give it a try let you know pretty cool now let's see can we push this together oh look at that we can just push it together and make it spin <laughs> with the grease on there caught up on some wires here there we go looks like I got one broke there I gotta fix but yeah that's pretty cool you can just uh, squeeze it together and away it goes <laughs> All right, we're getting close to final assembly. Yay! So uh, that's it for this section. We're gonna proceed on and do the final assembly shortly. So thanks for watching.